I hope so. Now, I'm going to set a like target of 2,000 on this video because we did it with Wimbledon amazingly. And I figured, why the hell not try it again? So if we get 2,000 likes on the video, if you're looking forward to the series, that would be superb. And of course, subscribe if you are new. Of course, we're going to go over the objectives for the save as well as the goals for it uh, later in the video. So do not worry about that. It is coming up. But before any of that, we need to talk about the history of the club. And instead of me talking about it right now, I've prepared a little something to help us along the way. FC Michelin are a relatively new club by football standards, having been formed in only 1999. The club's formation came about as a merger between two clubs, Ecast FS and Herning Flamard. The two clubs had had a massive rivalry for many years, but neither club had really achieved any success in Danish football. On the 6th of April 1999, the deal was finalised and the club was formed. The following season, the club were promoted to the Danish Superliga having gained more points than any other team had in the history of the league. The club achieved minor European success as early as 2003, reaching the second round of the UEFA Cup, losing to Anderlecht. In 2004, the club moved into their brand new stadium in Herning, the MCH Arena, which held a capacity of 12,000 spectators. Despite its short existence, the club has already built a reputation for finding and developing young talent. Players to have come through their academy include Winston Reid, Eric Sivyatchenko, and Simon Scher. The club is also partnered with Nigerian side, FC Everday. The club also has a network of over 100 clubs located in the western part of Jutland. In 2014, Matthew Benham, the owner of English side Brentford, became the majority shareholder in the club. Later that season, FC Midtjylland won the Danish Superliga for the first time in the club's history. One of the club's most standout results came in 2016, when they defeated English Premier League side Manchester United 2-1 in the first leg of a Europa League tie. All in all, the club is ready to be taken to the next level, and that's where we come in. Right, now that we're all clued in on the history of the club, so we should all be up to date and we should all be experts on them by now, uh, we're going to talk about things that are important, like, like spelling. Uh, so we're going to go M-I-D, T-J, Y, double L, and... Actually, that's it. Anyway, moving on. Fabio was the man that won the poll to be the uh, manager of this save. In case you can't tell, that is not me. I don't look like that. Um, I don't have nearly enough fashion sense to pull off a suit like that. Uh, but yeah, we had to use his full name because it wouldn't let me just put one name in. So it's Fabio da Silva Moreira, which is actually his full name, but you just don't see it in the game uh, as much. Right, time to go over some objectives for this save. What we actually want to hopefully achieve at the end of this. Now, as you can see, Denmark are 22nd in the European coefficient rankings for qualification places which is kind of what we're looking at here is the actual league itself um we want to hopefully bring them from 22nd to the top that, that's the plan of this day we're going to try and build the danish league to be the best league in europe now obviously you can rarely ever do that type of thing just by managing one team but we are going to be doing it by managing one team but what we plan to do is build up the other clubs around us now the way we plan to do that is we're obviously going to be signing very young now i've set myself a rule on this save that i'm not allowed to sign any player who is over the age of 19 so 19 and under basically um or oh, we might change it, but it, 19 will be the max. I might even set it a bit lower later on. Uh, but it's going to be 19 and under, essentially, will be the only players we're allowed to sign in this save. Now, in order to make sure that the other teams around us in Denmark grow and prosper as we would like them to, we're going to be bringing in a lot of players. And players that don't quite make the grade at us, or perhaps we just feel like moving on, will always be sold to Danish clubs if I can. Now, of course, if a player is massive and wants to leave and he doesn't want to join the Danish club, I have no choice in the matter. But generally, I'm going to make sure as hard as I can that we try and sell players to the other sides in Denmark to keep them competitive and keep them boosting. That way we can be competitive in Europe, but so can they. And that is the key. In order to facilitate, that of course means we will not be signing players from fellow Danish sides either. Uh, now, this does leave us with a slight problem in terms of how we're going to get Danish players. Now, the only way we're going to be able to do that is by bringing them through our own academy, which is going to put a lot more emphasis on this than my other saves which is kind of good because i want to be able to bring through some good solid players of our own so the way we're going to do this is by as quickly as we can maxing out our youth and training facilities and whatnot and all that jazz to bring through the best youth players that we can for us as well 
That way we don't have to steal them from the other clubs. My overall aim in this save is to hopefully have us win the Champions League, but it would be fantastic as well if another Danish side was capable of winning a European competition um, without any interference from me as in terms of being the manager of the club. They just did it by themselves, but we just helped them along the way uh, with some players along the line. Obviously, players will go out on loan, of course, to other Danish sides as well. We're going to try and keep everything domestically, but we will be signing players from all over the world with our scouting regions, which is one of my favourite things to do in FN. Now, I wanted to show you what leagues we have turned on in this save, because I think it's important that we bring through young players from all over Europe. Now, you might notice I don't have South America turned on for once. Now, the reason for that is because I feel sometimes it's very easy to send a scout over and find a Brazilian wonder kid, and I always want to shy away from that a little bit. We may do that later in the save um, if we find ourselves scratching at straws, but for the moment, I'd like to concentrate on some of the European nations. So, as you can see, we've got Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark. We've got England, only the top two divisions, though, because who cares? We don't need the lower ones. Finland, France, Germany, Italy, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia. I forgot to turn off these uh, when I was setting it up, so we'll turn those off now because we don't need the second divisions of those countries. Serbia, Slovakia, Spain, Sweden, and Ukraine. I turned on as many as I could before the stars started getting to the point where I was worried that the computer might explode if we tried to simulate anything. Now, one of the downsides of doing this save in a way, and I didn't realise it until I loaded the game up to have a look at this last week, is that there's a lot of players that, in the standard new winter transfer update, are now apparently injured, which is a bit annoying, because, for example, people like Peony Sisto aren't injured. He, he's not injured in real life. He last injury he had was a car, uh, a groin strain, which was last February. And apparently he's in about for six months from June uh, with the groin strain. And we've got Petter Anderson here in the midfield, 13 to 15 months out injured. I don't know what's up with that. I've tried all kinds of things to try and make it work. But unfortunately, if I use the old database, we had loads of players missing from it. And for some reason, database updates didn't seem to make any difference for it. So we're going to just have to kind of push on through with a lot of injuries to start with. So Christian Backback is out, which is a fantastic name, by the way. Jim Larson, he's a really solid central defender out for five months. Johan Dahlin, six to seven months with strained knee ligaments. I mean, Rilhan Hassan, he actually is injured with that um, broken leg, or he was last summer. That's fair enough. And the goalkeeper is out there too. But some of these just seem a little bit absurd. But what can you do? Like, people were saying to me, I was talking about this on Twitter, and people were saying, you know, just use the database editor at start to change the uh, change the injuries out but i just didn't want to do that for, for two reasons one because the fact is this is how the game's presented them so we should play it like this and two because if i start editing things in the database at the start it just means that later on if something goes right for us or we find a great player people can just say oh well you've added them into the database and i just don't want the hassle of that so we're just gonna have to go with what we've got basically and besides it builds character and that's what we're after after all brendan rogers i'm sure would agree so looking at the actual squad itself i mean when you look at it from a sort of abilities point there's actually a lot of very solid players nobody's like amazingly good uh, in terms of no five stars or anything like that but there's a lot of very solid players between four and three stars now of course many of them are injured which is not fun but what can you do sisters are injured anderson larson hassan darlin and backbat are all out injured but at least there's some positives to be taken from this. We've got some decent players in there too, like Tim Sparv, Harmeet Singh, Novak. This man's got long throws for days, even though he's only rated at 14. Now, Vaklav Kadlek, I was playing a little bit of a Midland save just to test some stuff out, and I didn't have him on that one because I was playing on the old database, but apparently he's a bit of a football manager legend, uh, so hopefully he will perform well for us as well. Now, looking at potential with the players, Nikolai Kirk actually has insanely good potential, and I had no one even mentioned him when they were talking about players to keep hold of, uh, but he looks like he's got real potential. Now, obviously, we're going to try and, you know, because a lot of the players have got really tiny release clauses. Like, for example, Piano Sisto, I think his release clause is, is minimal. It's £6 million. Now, the first thing I'm going to do this summer, basically, is try and get those players on new contracts. That means a lot of our transfer funds, which is not exactly huge to begin with, um, are going to be going on wages and new contracts for people, which means I probably won't bring in any players this summer because that's not the plan. And remember, I've got the rules to adhere to as well. So if I pick up a couple, then I, I will try. But the fact is, this summer is going to be about building the tactic, building the... Uh, contracts for the future hopefully and going from there with it essentially that's the plan overall and that's what i'll be trying to do um hopefully this is the tactic that i'm hopefully going to start using now of course this could change massively and i expect it will do probably within the next couple of episodes as we inevitably find that it's not as good as i think it is um now the annoying thing about it is that this team actually would suit my wimbledon tactic down to the t because they've got fantastic players in all the positions that i like to use in that tactic but i didn't want to just use the same tactic from my previous save i wanted to try and invent something new now Obviously, some of the style is a little bit similar, but that's just because that's the way I like to play FM. And I find that after a while, while I'm tweaking stuff in games, I end up finding myself back at the same point as where I was before. And I find myself going down the same alleys because I know that that works. Now, this is what we're going with. It is a lot different. There's still a lot of different things. Basically, all the roles are pretty much completely different, particularly from here on. Uh, the back part is kind of similar, but that's just because I know that that's a solid base to build on. Uh, but everything else is kind of different. Now, 
I'm going to try wingers on attack, but we can move that around a little bit later on. So what I might switch, though, is put the wingers on support and move the attacking playmaker onto attack. I'm not sure which works best, but that's what we're going with for now. Now, we're going on a standard mentality this time. I've never really experimented that much with it. And the reason I'm using it this time is because I want to try and build a tactic that we can change on the fly at the start of game. So if we look like we're going to keep the ball, then we can move to control. If we look like we're going to lose the ball a lot, we can switch to counter and still be nice and fluid with it. Now, we're also going to move to a fluid team shape, which will allow these players to just have a little bit more free roam and a little bit more flexibility in the tactic, which is something I think we lacked in the previous one. Now, the other thing about it is we're playing a more deep line. We're going to sit and we're going to spring. I actually originally was going to call it the deep spring, but that sounded a little bit dodgy. So we went with the deep dominator instead. We're going to play lower tempo because I just find that's better for these sort of situations. Very minimal instructions in general, for the most part. We're playing a little bit wider, sitting slightly deeper, closing down less, and passing into space. That's all we've got on, really. And I think that works quite well. The minimal instructions seems to work very, very nicely for me. And that's what we're going to hopefully go for um, in our first few games of the season. Now, what's going to happen is in the next episode, we're going to come back and I'll play the through the preseason. We'll play some friendlies. I'll maybe try and sign someone. It depends. It really does depend on how much money is available after I've tried to extend contracts with certain players. You know, that's just how it is, guys. So in the next episode, we're going to be doing uh, the away game against Hibernia. This was already drawn when I moved into it, so there's no draw to do. We're a Maltese team, and if we can't get past them, we've got some real, real problems. Um, hopefully, we'll get ourselves a good tactic sorted by then. Um, I'd like to think that this one will be good enough for that, um, but it will depend on what happens once we start getting into the uh, Super League. But the Champions League starts very, very early for us, which is a bit of a pain so guys if you're looking forward to the series and i really hope you are because i really really wanted to do something that was just that little bit different um and that's the idea of this series then do smash the like button that'd be fantastic and subscribe if you are new to the channel as well um and in the next episode which will be tomorrow unfortunately just because i've had so much stuff to do i couldn't do my usual double thing i do when i start a new series but that's just how the way it has to be next episode we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff in the transfer window hopefully and uh, getting into our first ever game in this save against hibernians in the champions league qualifiers so i'll see you guys soon thank you so so much for watching i really do appreciate it bye bye first order of business is 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 spelling uh, basically so we're going to go through that now we're going to go with an m an i a t that's not right at all